Now, what's going on with this lawsuit that came in with Sturtz Burnett and the, uh, what do you want to call the uh, restrictions on showing commissions on the MLS? For us, it goes into effect August 1st. For the rest of the country, August 17th. Each multiple listing service could determine on their own when they wanted to enact these new guidelines. And that's all the new guidelines are, is that you can no longer post offering compensation to a buyer's agent. You can't post it. You can still offer it. It's kind of weird. So it's created a lot of confusion, even to where the president said, the 6% commission is gone. You're all going to save money. He could not be more wrong. And a lot of news companies have said the same thing. The 6% commission has gone. Well, you know, it kind of got whittled down anyway as the market got brisk. But this has nothing to do with the percentage. All it is is you can't post it. Now, because of the confusion, some people are sitting on their hands waiting to see what it's going to be like. I've called this the summer of confusion. It's going to be rough. The requirement is now, and this is where it really gets confusing, that before an agent can show you a home, you have to enter into an agreement with that agent so you know how much they charge to represent you. So the agreement says, uh, you're going out with me, I charge 2.5% to manage the transaction, or maybe I charge 2%, maybe I charge 3 maybe I charge 1%. It's all over the board, always has been. It always has been based on what the seller's been offering. Now the seller can still offer that, but if they don't, um, we can enter an agreement that you, the buyer, will pay me. Now, how many buyers are going to want to do that? Probably not too many. Plus, they don't want to enter into an agreement. So we can have an agreement that says, I charge 2%. Okay. Now we go to a house and it's for sale. I have to now call the agent and go, is there an agreement to pay a buyer broker commission? No, the seller is offering nothing. Okay, so I go back to the buyer and say, now the buyer's not offering anything, but I charge 2%. How would you like to handle that? In most cases, the buyer's going to say, let's write an offer and then ask them to contribute that 2% for concessions for a buyer agent commission. See how that works? Same thing. It's just done differently. But where the nervousness is coming in is buyer agents, buyers right now are going... I have to enter into an agreement with an agent before I can even see the house? To heck with that. I'm just going to wait till they have an open house and go see it myself, or I'm going to call the agent that's uh, got it listed. Well, now, the dirty little secret is when you sign a buyer-broker agreement with an agent, you can sign one just for the weekend if you want. It's like going on a date. You don't bring the engagement ring to the dinner table. You don't want to make a long-term commitment. Buyers don't want to do that with realtors either. Well, somebody asked a question this morning on the show. Do you think the MLS will go away? No. No. Multiple listing service is a platform of clear cooperation with some very strict rules. You have to make sure all the data is accurate. Now, there are some countries that don't have that, like England. Panama I used as an example. You can look at a house that's for sale for $190,000. Hmm, okay. You go to another realtor's website, it's 205000 you eventually work your way down to where you contact the owner and they go, oh, no, I'm only asking 180. There's no multiple listing service down there. So the agent goes to the seller and says, what do you want? I want 180. Okay, well, I'm going to mark it for 190. Great. That seller can list it with several different agents. Hey, you want my listing? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to see if I can get 200 for it. Great. Okay, I only want 180. So that's how they make their commissions. We don't do that here in the United States. We have a set price. We lay out how much we used to, lay out how much we were paying the buyer broker commission. And quite honestly, we're charging the seller a certain percentage. Here's what it is. I'm taking that and I'm splitting it with another brokerage. Or you know what? I'm giving the other brokerage 30% of that. Or I'm giving them more than that. I offered 4% once. No, 5%. I charged the seller 6%. Offered 5%. Bring me a buyer. Here's 5%. Just to see what would happen. Everybody thought it was a mistake. I go, do you see the buy broke that I'm offering? Yeah, I thought that was an error. No, it's true. Oh, it didn't influence their decision at all. It didn't make them say, oh, good. Well, let me call three other buyers. This is great. It doesn't. There is an impact. Let's be honest. If, if I've got a buyer broker agreement where you're going to pay me 2%, 
and you write an offer for the seller and we ask for that 2% to come back from the seller to pay me as an agent and they say no, then as a buyer, I can say, okay, how do you, buyer's agent, how do you want to proceed? And the buyer can say, well, I really want that house. Okay, well, you have to work directly with the uh, selling agent then because I'm not going to draft all the documents and do all the work and see it all the way to the end for nothing. That's the way business works. That's the way it works with your lawyer. That's the way it works with a car dealer. Have you gone in to negotiate with a car and then actually asked the car dealer, the, the sales agent, what they make? We have no idea what they make on the car. They don't post it anywhere. We don't care. We just say, see, the car is $15,000. Great. Okay. How much is your commission on that? We never ask, but we do in real estate. So it's going to get very, very confusing as we move forward. And I think that's going to have an impact in the month of August, along with the jitters that we have over this contentious election year. So anyway, that's my outlook on August in the Arizona real estate market. If you watch me live this morning, I apologize for all the crackling that was going on. So now I'm going to try and figure out what the heck happened. Have a great day. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick at rickhelps.com.